a silent film made 100 years ago but never seen publicly is about to get a world premiere. The Museum of Modern Art restored the film, and now there's an exhibit. It's a rare and important discovery, a romantic comedy with a large cast of black actors and one of the era's famed icons playing the leading man. The story behind the film was largely unknown until now. NPR's Walter Ray Watson has more. This silent movie without a name was made in 1913, two years before Birth of a Nation stirred American audiences with racist portrayals of greedy and violent blacks. By contrast, this motion picture is filled with hopeful images, black people depicted with respect. It was never released. After decades locked away in MoMA's film archives, it opens publicly next month. Recently, the museum allowed a small group to watch the film unedited. Two. Hiannis Don Sosin recently dropped by the museum and offered samples of the period music he plans to perform at the film's debut. An early scene from the film shows actress Odessa Warren Gray, the female lead, standing behind a wooden gate, her modest, cheerful house right behind her. Curator Ron Magliozzi and his colleagues found Gray fascinating. We looked at these costumes for years and said, this has got to be somebody, this woman. She's amazingly poised. Then discovered that she was a designer and a socialite, in fact. Gray was a stage performer, and this was her only movie appearance. It's a romantic comedy. Three suitors vie for her attention. There's a picnic, or field day as they used to call it, scenes from a local fair topped off with dancing at a ball. Nothing surprising for a silent movie, but this one is really exceptional because most of the characters are black. Dignified in manner and dress, something very rare for a feature film from this period. The unseen story of, of African American culture in film and on screen. This is an unknown story. Deborah Willis is chair of photography at NYU. She's watching the film for the first time. I know images, I know still images of some of these moments. We see the importance of drum and bugle corps. We see the importance of the Masonic community, but also the merry-go-round. You know, that kind of freedom that happens with going around in a circle and joy and wind blowing through the hair of, of the people. The scene captures the film's romantic leads on wooden horses, and a camera takes us along for their spinning ride. I would say, as a film person, a little ambitious scene for a production in 1913. Is, yeah. Deborah Willis says there's a rare sense of joy in this film and its cast, especially the women. The, the cinched waists, the flowy skirts, you know, women working, women playing, women dating. The film is also special because Burt Williams is in it. He was famous, the first black Broadway star, a regular with Ziegfeld's Follies. He made 80 records and was compelled to perform in blackface. The lead comedians in these black musicals that were very popular in the period would be in blackface and the rest of the cast appeared without makeup. Curator Ron Magliozzi. It was kind of a sop to the white audiences that the lead comic is going to wear blackface. Everyone else can perform in a more authentic way. Reducing him to the blackface, the burnt cork makeup that he wore was doing a terrible disservice to him as a performer. Camille Forbes is the author of the biography Introducing Burt Williams. What I found was a comedian who could do physical comedy, had dance moves that were part of his jokes, but then he would also go into this plaintive character, which would later become known as the Jonah Man. Forbes says Williams demonstrated this persona on stage and in song. In 1906, he had a small hit, and it became his musical signature. When life seems full of flowers, I am full of nothing and pain. Who's my thumping, bumping brain? Hmm? Nobody. On Nobody, Williams plays a sad sack character who's helpless and unloved. But in the film, Bert Williams is not a sad sack. Bert gets the girl, and that's significant. <laughs> Bert kisses the girl, also very significant. This is a very lovely take. You can see their eyes flickering at the camera. And, uh... <laughs> Deborah Willis especially likes this scene. You know, to see a black man and a black woman kissing on screen, it just shows an intimacy that we rarely see, again, in black film during that time period. To find the names of the actors was a treasure hunt. 
the museum scanned 100 images from the movie and matched them against black newspapers of the day. We basically used very crude facial recognition technology. We took the faces we'd scanned from the film and we went to the black press. We went to the New York Age that reported in somewhat great detail on any activity can, related to black performance. As for the dialogue and story, lip readers were brought in since no production notes or a script survived. Archivists found in the footage moving images of three directors working together, two white, one black, remarkable at a time when the country was greatly divided by race. Burt Williams' fame helped him navigate those lines in life and even in death. He's buried in the Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx, not far from Irving Berlin and Herman Melville. In 1922, 5,000 people paid their respects to this immigrant from the Bahamas. I think his legacy is, is significant in many ways. On this bright, windy day, scholar Deborah Willis stands a few steps from Burt Williams' headstone. Not only as a philanthropist and a comedian and a musician and a star, but also he transformed the idea about how to reread and reconsider um, black manhood. Camille Forbes believes this film reopens the book on Burt Williams' art and vision. It's a very powerful statement about Williams's efforts to perform the character he would wish to perform on his own terms and in an environment that makes that character the most rich it can be, the most meaningful it can be. Ron Magliozzi, back at MoMA, says he hopes the film's future lies beyond its upcoming debut, and maybe this once-forgotten set of film negatives will one day come out on DVD. Walter Ray Watson, NPR News.